Hello and welcome to episode three of the Power of Women podcast. These first four episodes are being released daily in the lead up to the POW Festival, a four day digital festival that focuses on power in protest. This time I speak to Gemma Channing, artist, activist, health worker, all round power woman, as she combines all of these things with a contemporary social action poster campaign that will look good and actually be really bloody useful too. So find out more in a mo. But first, my now globally infamous quiz uh, and a fun way of celebrating badass women. Kate Shepherd was a women's rights activist in New Zealand and the most famous suffragette in the country. She led the charge for women's suffrage in New Zealand, eventually leading it to be the first country that gave women the right to vote. She's now a national hero and only one of these is true. A can be seen on the 10 New Zealand dollar note. B has had thousands of tourists photographed beside her statue in Wellington. Or C has a whole course about her life at the University of Auckland. I'll leave you to mull that one over, but now over to Gemma. The Power of Women. The Power of Women. The Power of Women podcast. Hi Gemma. Lovely Gemma Channing um, here and we're talking about the amazing project that you're working on for Power Thanet this year called Vital Signs. So can you tell us a little bit about the work that you do previously before we go into Vital Signs? Yeah, of course. Um, So um, most of my work centres really around using art and creative practice for health and well-being and using it for social change. Um, so previously I've done a lot of work um, in mental health and in learning disabilities using um, arts and creative activities to kind of uh, boost understanding and as part of like learning and as a therapeutic process as well as something that people can take part in that's actually going to improve their health. Um, So I've done partnerships between like NHS inpatient mental health wards and galleries. I think my most recent project in Margate um, was the Margate Manifesto. Which is fantastic. Yeah, thank you. And that was all about really, so I've lived in Margate my whole life. I was born here and I love what's happening with Margate, what's been happening for the last 10 years. I really feel like the town has become this, it's becoming this amazing place. And it's just in this moment of kind of, kaleidoscopic change everywhere you go everything's like bursting open but I also know from my work that there's a lot of kind of underlying social issues in Margate and in Fanet the wider area and I really wanted to kind of bring those two worlds together because often these two imaginary groups of locals and not locals get pitted against each other in a lot of like online discourse and journalism and I'm really against that because I don't I don't feel that serves a purpose and I wanted to do something it's a waste of energy isn't it it's kind of like let's unite yeah and that's what I wanted I wanted something that was going to unite people and to ultimately demonstrate that everyone that lives here has the same ideas of what they want from the town we all and and that was thankfully like demonstrated in people's responses so I I did an online kind of way that people could respond and various workshops in kind of traditional art spaces, but also in community groups. And there was a lot of ideas that people had that really went right across the board from every demographic, every age group, wherever you came from, about wanting to protect Margate as an environmental location and to have it as somewhere where people could come together and people really spoke about the community in Margate and wanting it to develop. So from my perspective, it was a really positive experience because it it showed that despite this kind of argumentative narrative that's that kind of perpetuated in articles and like online forums really and Facebook groups and stuff. Yeah, yeah, actually people do want the same thing and actually they do want to kind of come together more. So if anyone hasn't seen the Margate Manifesto, they can Google it, right, and find it because it's out there. I mean, I'll share it on the Power Social as well in the lead up to the festival. Yeah, so yeah, if you I think if you literally Google the Margate Manifesto, it'll come up with a Facebook page and there's some like photos of when we were making it and we marched around town reading it as well. Um Yeah, I love how you kind of like brought it into a performative parade sort of space as well. It just kept popping up all the time, which I loved. <laughs> yeah, everyone should check it out. And it's it's kind of like a manifesto to live by wherever you live too. So if you're not listening in Margate, you can kind of apply it to your own town. Although I must say it's it's a very unique town we have here and it 
it's such, just such a special energy and time. And that's why I'm so excited about this show that you're doing for POW. Um, do you want to talk us through Vital Signs? Yeah, so Vital Signs is, I mean, it's kind of more of my work around arts and health. And um, especially for POW, I wanted to talk about women's health. So health inequalities in Thanet are generally vast, whatever your gender. Um, but one of the sort of more pervasive health inequalities is gender um, and the, the kind of the state of women's health care and women's ability to access treatment and diagnosis. Um, it's very difficult for women to, to get the treatment that they need and to get the, the name for the condition that they have that's impacting their life even mm -hmm. can be an uphill battle. I mean, so I myself have endometriosis and it's it's a reproductive um, condition. It's it's not very well known, but it affects one in 10 women. So globally, we're talking about hundreds of millions of women. Um, but despite the fact that it affects so many women, it takes on average 14 years to get a diagnosis. And a lot of the reasons that women give for struggling to get that diagnosis is not being listened to and being told that it's normal, um, and having their their symptoms of pain and bloating and joint pain written off. Um, so I started researching it from my own kind of experience and found that this isn't just happening within endometriosis. This is happening across women's care. Um, it's happening in chronic pain. Most women, most people that suffer with chronic pain are women. So 70% of chronic pain patients are women. Wow. But the majority of research into chronic pain is done on males. Wow. And women are more likely to die of a heart attack. They're half as likely to get treatment for chest pain, but and they're twice as likely to die of a heart attack. Um, and mental health as well. Yeah, does, does, this, does making this show actually just depress you? I mean, it's so it's unbelievable, isn't it? Is yeah, it doesn't depress me because I think that I'm really inspired by all the women that are really? getting up and arguing about it and creating a platform for women but behind them to that's why this show is so important yes. and that it's and you you're making these so yeah what is the product is sorry i'm jumping ahead but what sorry yeah <laughs> is the the posters around town with with some of these stats and some yeah so i wanted it to really what i found is that some of the issues around access in healthcare is women not having the confidence to advocate for themselves so i wanted to do something that was empowering women to be able to know their bodies and to ask for the help that they need um, and that that in itself can be one of the steps that we take to close that gap yeah. it's something, there's, there's a lot of factors but I think empowering women to know themselves and to know when something's not wrong and feel able to talk about it is important oh, because so, realistically if you turn if you flip that and you and you think would a man not shout out if they were in pain about these things or demand a diagnosis you know there is a different confidence I think for for females in that space like oh I won't bother the doctor or you know that kind of like beauty yeah. feminine energy of like oh well I and I just don't think that this would this if if men went through something like endometriosis that they would just sit back and say oh it's oh we oh, yeah, doctor just said it's period pain it's like no <laughs> they would be shouting for a diagnosis yeah and quite rightly and why why shouldn't they absolutely absolutely yeah i mean i um, think i think as well the problem is when someone brushes off your experience you then lose the confidence to talk about it again yeah yeah, yeah. um so, so it's just about empowering women to say don't don't let these di ill diagnoses put you off you can speak yeah and persevere and it's not about attacking healthcare staff because no, I've worked in the NHS myself I know that people that work in medicine all they want to do is to help their patients get better so I don't think it's an individual staff thing I think it's just about nowadays I think it's more important to think of a doctor patient relationship as just that a relationship so you both go in and you both have a say about what's going to happen next whereas maybe historically it's been seen as the doctor is the lead in what happens to your body. So empowering women to play a part in their own treatment um, rather than slating doctors, because that's not what I want to do. Nobody wins in that. And, and we talk a lot about intersectional feminism and it's like, you know, having everyone's back, like we need men on our side, we need doctors on our side. We, it's not like a sort of versus thing. 
No, no, absolutely not. And I think only good stuff can come from this because I know as a healthcare professional myself, all we want is for our patients to have a good life, have good well-being, whatever condition they've got to have the best experience of life that they can. Yeah. So the finished product of this show will be posters put up in shops and businesses and doctor surgeries around town, right? That's right, yeah. So there's going to be uh, a few different designs of the posters that are quite, that have different messaging on them, um, and we're going to translate them as well um, because of the demographic in, in, in Thanet, we want to make sure it's accessible. Yeah. Um, and there's going to be a kind of QR code so people can access like more information. So the posters are kind of the headlines, if you will. Mm-hmm. People can kind of read into it further if they want, and there'll be audio descriptions available too. So, um, and hopefully they will be kind of enjoyable, like positive pieces of artwork in themselves rather than a kind of dreary, oh, isn't everything bad in healthcare? Like, this is a positive thing. This is about giving people the tools to advocate for themselves and feel empowered. And that is a wonderful, joyful thing. And that's what I want to reflect in the design of the post. Thank you. It's such a brilliant project. And I'm so really super proud that it's part of this year's POW because it's like, it's bang on for what we're all going through at the moment. Like, cause I think you, we spoke about this idea before we were in a lockdown. So it kind of, it's ideal cause it's going into shop windows. So it doesn't, you know, it can be socially distanced when you, see the work so it's it's literally perfect and yeah healthcare and what what the NHS are going through at the moment it's just oh it's a it's a crazy time <laughs> it's certainly that yeah <laughs> and who knows where we'll be when power happens I yeah. don't know but yeah but all we do know is that you are making these beautiful posters and they, they will be up for people to see so and also we will share them online so people can see them from wherever they are in the world yeah yeah, no, I think, yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's a shame that everything is kind of not being able to happen in the way that we would expect it to be happening. But I kind of, I came up with this idea thinking in my pessimistic little part of my brain, what if we're in another lockdown? <laughs> so, uh, so hopefully, and also by putting it in like news agents and supermarkets, it's, it's a new audience hopefully can see it or people that might not necessarily go to a gallery yeah, I'm really, I'm really grateful for that because I want more than anything to have the message of power spread across all demographics of, of these towns. Because that, that's the point, right? It's like arts and culture is for everyone and using the space to, and I think it's what's wonderful is that you toe the line between working in the, in the healthcare world and being an artist. So it's brilliant. Being able to do these projects is something that's really empowering and uplifting for me, especially in a lockdown in January when it won't stop raining. We'll continue with this interview just after I think of today's sponsor. Hang on, there isn't one. POW Thanet is a charity that does incredible work across the community, culminating in this fantastic festival every year for International Women's Day. And we're really excited to start doing projects all across the year. So if you'd like to sponsor this podcast, get in touch. Also, you as a listener can support us by rating this podcast, five stars please, and give it a nice review. This all really helps. Thank you for your support. The Power of Women. Power of Women. The Power of Women. Power of Women podcast. I I wanted to talk to you about what feminism means to you. I've been talking to everyone in this podcast about how they were taught feminism in school. And I'm kind of interested in your Margate upbringing of like, you know, how, how was feminism presented? Was it a sort of dirty word or... Did you feel you part of the girl power generation? I mean, yeah, I mean, like, I can't remember it ever really being discussed in school, like in any meaningful context. I mean, I didn't bunk school that much, so I'm pretty sure that I would have been there when they taught it. I think, like, the first kind of inkling I got about feminism was the, the Spice Girls girl power thing. I think I didn't even realise that, like, I had, like, a gender... Like and that it impacted my life for a very long time. Like as a, as a kid, you don't do you, and then yeah, as a teenager, that's a beautiful thing as being a young girl, you yeah, just kind of like one of the boys, and then go, oh, we're different. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, things are suddenly starting to get a bit weird. I mean, my mom always taught me that like it doesn't matter like if you're a girl or a boy or tall or short or fat or thin or if you're poor or how much money you've got. It's you treat everyone the same yeah. um and you make sure that like 
if you find she's very much a like she sees everything from everyone's perspective so like it's easy to judge people but imagine yourself in their shoes um and also don't let other people judge you because they haven't stepped in your shoes so I've always felt like kind of yeah so that was I've not really as a young girl I didn't really have much of a like feminist kind of understanding or like that's what's really interesting now of like this kind of um insta feminist generation that they're getting these beautiful messages uh quite early on you know like at school age they're kind of finding feminism and it's really interesting to talk to younger feminists so we've got this collective called canvas for equality and they're all between 19 and 22 and they're yeah they're really passionately talking about issues that i had no idea about until like now basically <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> turning 40 this year so it's a mad um it's a mad time when we reflect on, because I similarly, like, you know, followed the Spice Girls and then we're like, oh, it's cool that girls can do anything. And my mum gave me that same message, but that it didn't, definitely didn't factor into it, like, schooling. Um, no, definitely not. I, I'm so glad you mentioned Canvas for Equality, because I've, in fact, it might be an interview that signposted me to them. They're such, like, articulate and educated, like... Young girls, and they know, like, like you said, they're talking about stuff that I've only recently found out about, and I, like, I'm amazed by them, and I'm like borderline envious of them because I'm like, oh, I wish I'd have known this much, like, totally, and they're doing the world. It from such a beautiful place, like, it's it's inquisitive and it's eloquent, and it's not um too judgy or opinionated. It's just like let's listen to everyone. Um, yeah, this is exactly how I want the power message to be it's just like we're all in this together we're all learning together no one is right or wrong it's a sort of journey of you know there's uh, so much baggage around the word feminism and you know maybe that's not even the right word to describe what power does and is maybe it's gender equality and we're not you know talking about women and girls and non-binary people but the festival mm -hmm. is for everyone so it's sort of like because everyone should be a feminist and like we can't rise without men on our side because we've got to free them so we can free ourselves and like I'm tying myself in knots like going what is it what is this festival and when I watch those young girls I think they're what they are what it is you know the next generation who are able to be so articulate and inquisitive and gorgeous and jolly yeah. about it. it's, so, it's so hopeful isn't it particularly at the moment it's yeah it's really it's really good to know that there are the generations coming up behind us are doing better than us in some ways yeah, and, yeah. you know like in a world that is like probably I don't know if it's never been this crazy but it feels like they've got a lot on their plate kind of globally totally the girls coming yeah. up behind us and all the communities coming up behind us the LGBT community yeah. black community like and the, the women behind us are doing so much amazing work yeah. it makes me feel like actually there is like we, what we've been working towards is actually gaining momentum. Yeah. And one day. Hopefully like, they stood on our shoulders to get to where they are now. Maybe we gave something to the world that was useful, hopefully. <laughs> we yeah, still like just as we got like what we got from the generation before us, like there are bits that we can give to like the girls coming up behind yeah. us. And maybe gender inequality is something that is achievable because I would have, 10 years ago, I would have questioned if it ever was achievable, but I think. It's a long road, but it could be possible. It could be. I mean, yeah. the vice president in America is a big deal. Like she's, you know, that was that I got really emotional watching the inauguration because it was just like this is, this is it, right? The first time yeah. a woman's been, you know, and hopefully our, the politics here might shift as well, and we can, you know, all really start having the bigger conversations. I was saying to Canvas for Equality, please get into politics. <laughs> we need yes. young women like them. Um, but it's not the most attractive job, really, to a young person. But hopefully, they might consider it. <laughs> that, yeah, that would be amazing. I don't want yeah. to have pressure on them because they need to live their lives. <laughs> <laughs> like, save us, girls. <laughs> um, but the last question, you've kind of answered it. But I wanted to ask you who an inspirational feminist to you is. I know you mentioned your mum, but if you could like think of anyone that sort of like played a role in your life, it might be a musician or someone that kind of yeah has sort of uh inspired you to do the work you do or just that you want to shout out um I think like oh god that's so hard because there's so many good women to choose from there like, are aren't there and really, and yeah. these towns don't you uh, isn't like planet incredible it really like, is yeah women. it's a um I'm gonna go for like international so I'm gonna go for Patty Smith oh yes because she's been 
the soundtrack of my life Aww. from childhood. And I think every time I listen to, she's always been like a radical. She's always been a punk. She's always been fighting for the things that we're fighting for now. She's been fighting for for 50 years. Consistently, yeah. Consistently. And she's so talented. And just, uh, I just every time I listen to her music or read her poetry, I get something new out of it. And I think if she can carry on doing it and she's like nearly 80, then I can carry on doing it too. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, that gives you such hope, doesn't it? When there's that, it's it's almost like she's a mentor without her knowing that she's done that for you. Yeah, she's. I mean, like she's. I just think she's great, and she's like her her artwork is beautiful, but her activism is like powerful, and it's it's very. She's very true to herself. Well, you're Thanet's Patty Smith. <laughs> I need to grow my hair and get a suit then. Yeah, you can do that. You're in lockdown. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> Get a sewing machine and grow your hair. Yeah. Easy. Um, I'm really, really happy to talk to you and so proud that you're involved in POW this year. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me as part of it. I'm really, really proud to be a part of it. It's a great, it's a great, it's a great organisation and I'm really looking forward to being part of it. Thanks, love. Yeah, everyone go and check out Gemma's show. Um, yeah, more details will be going up on the POW socials. So thank you, love. Have a nice day. Thank you. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Thank you, Gemma. What an inspiration. I can't wait to see this poster campaign. And I know you've all been on the edge of your seat for the answer here. Kate Shepherd, women's rights activist in New Zealand, is a national hero and, if only one of these is true, can be seen on the 10 New Zealand dollar note. B has had thousands of tourists photographed beside her statue in Wellington, or C has a whole course about her life at the University of Auckland. And the answer is can be seen on the 10 New Zealand dollar note. So there you go. I hope you're registered for the free Pal Thanet Digital Festival. We've worked incredibly hard on bringing what would normally be a huge real life festival across three towns into four days live streaming. We've packed in dance workshops, panel talks, poetry, live music, banner making workshops, talks, films, all hosted by Gemma Kearney and coming to you live on your sofa for free. Not a bad offering, hey? Enjoy, big love and see you there. And thanks for listening to this, our third episode in a week long journey to our annual International Women's Day Festival. Please rate this podcast five stars and leave a review. It really does help us. If you'd like to support us even further or get involved, please find out more at powerplanet.com. Women Podcast. Women Podcast.